Today I'm going to be trying to make a bread recipe that we found on the internet that's based on tangerines. So this video is a collaboration with my friend Babatunde in Nigeria. He found a video on Facebook which looks like it's a repost of a TikTok video by 132 Kitchen of a type of bread made with tangerines instead of water I suppose. I'm going to try and make something like that today based on that recipe but I am going to change it around a little bit. So the original video which I've kind of sketched down here used two large tangerines and then mixed in eggs, sugar, salt, yeast and butter and blended them. And now I'm going to change things around a little bit here. Firstly I'm going to use a whole tangerine in there. I'm not going to peel them because I'm going to try and get some flavour out of the zest of the tangerine here. By the way these are clementines. I'm not going to put the other ingredients in here until we've strained it because I think we just lose some of those sugar and egg and whatever in the straining process. So, and I'm also using three because these are a bit smaller than the ones looked in the video. We'll start by blending that up to a kind of smooth pulp. Do you know what? I think I'm going to put my fourth tangerine in. I just don't think that's actually very much liquid at all in there. So we're going to go for four clementines. Right, I think that's about as close as we're going to get to blended. So we we'll take the sharp bit out. We'll try to strain that, maybe in two batches. I just don't see the point of adding the eggs in there. I suppose they would, the liquid in the egg might carry some of the orange flavour through, but it seems like we're just going to lose a lot of it in the pulp. So I'll just press that through the sieve. It does smell very, very tangerine -y. And what we've kind of made here is a very crude form of comminuted tangerines. Comminuted citrus is what they use for making orange squash in the UK. It's kind of like the entire fruit blended down to the point you get flavour out of the skin as well. Now you can get some bitter flavours out of the white part of the rind of citrus but when it's actually combined with the rest of the, the thing, the sugars from the pulp and everything else, it's probably going to be okay. I think that's about as much as we're going to get out of there. I will just reserve that for now because I have an idea we might need it for something else. In case the idea of putting the whole orange or tangerine in here seems really weird and horrible, if you think about orange marmalade, that's made from the whole fruit, including even the seeds. And so it's not, it's not exactly as if there's no precedent for this. Okay, well that's my tangerine liquid and it looks great and smells fantastic. I am just going to add about half a cup of water to this, in fact probably about a quarter of a cup of water to this pulp. Give it a little mash with a fork just to bring it back together, just to get some more flavour out of this tangerine skin, just to get the zest completely out. So let's just have a look and see. Yeah, there is some colour to the juice there. So another round of straining. Let's just have a look at what's coming out. Yes, it is orange in colour. So presumably also in flavour. This is quite a deviation from the original recipe that I'm basing this on. So uh, I'm kind of already off into the terra incognita here. Right, I think that's as far as we need to go. So that's my tangerine extract. So that turns out to be about 200 ml of tangerine extract. I need to add my eggs to that. And I think that's going to make it up to about 300 ml. So I'll just put them in a glass so that we can check them before we put them in. Okay, and that takes me up to actually about 300 ml. Just going to beat those eggs in there. Now for the purposes of this recipe I'm going to assume that 300 ml is 300 grams and I'm going to use a ratio. So I'm going to use 500 grams of flour and to make mixing easier I'm going to take out one whole cup of flour put that back in nearer the end. The original recipe I'm basing this on calls for one cup full of sugar. I'm going to dial that back to about two thirds of a cup just because I think that's a lot of sugar. And it 
also calls for 28 grams of yeast, which is a heck of a lot of yeast. So I'm just going to use an 8 gram sachet here of instant, of instant dried yeast. It may be that they were using uh, dried active yeast rather than instant yeast. This one sachet of yeast should be plenty for this mix. Just mix those dry ingredients together. We will have a pinch of salt in there as well. Now we just add the wet to the dry. So I've got a tablespoonful of melted butter and my egg and clementine liquid. Now I'm expecting that when I get this all blended together, it's gonna to be a little bit on the wet side because I haven't got all of the flour in here. And just reserving that flour like that just allows us to get a fairly even mix before we start making this into a dough. At the moment, it's more like a stiff batter. But now I can add in small amounts of this flour and work it until it comes back to a dough. And actually it might be that I won't add all of this. I might stop short if I feel I've got to the point where we've got a soft, pliable, but non-sticky dough. I might stop right there. It's a little bit awkward working with the camera in my face here. Right, I'm gonna stop there, turn this out on a board, and we'll do the rest of the working in of flour on the board. So on a floured board, I'm just gonna work this dough. It's very, very soft at the moment. So actually what I'm doing here is some of the kneading at the same time as mixing in the remainder of that flour. And as I say, we might not get all of that flour in there. It is a five to three ratio, which should work, but a lot of it's dependent on the absorbency of the flour and other factors because we've got sugar in there as well, which is another factor. And so it's kind of a bit done by feel here. I think that might actually be enough. I'm just gonna, yeah, it's still a bit sticky. So we'll just carry on going. Right, it's a lovely color, lovely kind of golden egg yolk, orange, yellow. Okay, I think that'll do. We'll make that into a ball. So my mixing bowl, which I haven't bothered to clean, I've just added a little bit of oil in the bottom and wiped it round so this won't stick too bad. In there, and we'll cover that up and allow that to double in size. I have a little bit of flour left, maybe about a tablespoon from my ratio. So I didn't use all of the flour, but I expect I probably will need to add that and maybe a little bit more when we've proved this once. Okay, that's been proving for an hour and it has doubled in size. Let's have a quick look. Easily doubled in size. While that was proving, I zested one orange. Just use a little zester tool, you can use a grater. And then the juice of the orange, I've poured over about half a cup of dried cranberries, just to soak them. So those have been in there soaking for about an hour. So what I'm gonna do with those cranberries now is drain them. And I might as well just drain them into there because I want that juice and zest to be together later on. And then I think we'll just use the remaining flour to work this dough. I might need a little bit more flour. But we'll see how it comes out. Yeah, more or less in one piece. Quite a shaggy dough. And I'm not surprised because the flour will have hydrated, the gluten's relaxed, all those kind of things while this has been proving. And I'm just gonna see how loose this is. It's quite, yeah, quite a floppy, a little bit sticky dough, but we've got this flour here to work into it and to keep it from sticking to my hands while I'm just kneading it. Lovely, lovely soft dough. I did just use plain flour. You could use bread flour for this, but I just used plain flour. That's the equivalent of all purpose flour, as it's called in the United States, I believe. That's actually quite a nice, pliable, soft dough. It does smell of clementines. So just a little extra flour because I'm gonna roll this out. The recipe I'm following had this divided up into eight pieces and baked in a bundt pan. I'm gonna do something slightly different. I'm gonna make it into a kind of a rectangle and then I'm just gonna roll it out. I'm just gonna roll it out into roughly a kind of long, oblong shape. A little bit more flour just to stop that from sticking. Okay, and just roll and then let it relax and then roll again. Not gonna to try to work it hard or anything like that here. So big kind of oblong shape, 
Now leaving a little margin along this edge, I'm just going to put my cranberries on there and then distribute them. Might just press those in a little bit so they stay where they are. Also I have about half a jar of thick cut marmalade. This is really thick orange marmalade with great big chunks of peel in it, but that will work okay. And I'm just going to break that up and kind of drop chunks of it all over here. Now this has got a fair bit of sugar in it. This is why I dialed back the sugar in the bread dough, because I am adding sugar in the form of orange marmalade here, and there is also going to be a little drizzle on this later. So I haven't used quite half a jar there. There's about enough for one slice of toast left. If these were cinnamon buns, we would be adding some brown sugar at this point, but there's quite a bit of sugar in this marmalade. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. And probably not necessary, but I'm just going to spread a little bit of water on that edge there. Then I'm going to roll that up. Kind of even out the thickness. So carefully, without hacking through my silicone mat, I'm going to cut this into, uh, what do we reckon? Eight pieces, well, maybe actually 12. Not worrying too much about bits falling out of it at the moment. That will resolve itself. Okay, 12 pieces. And then on a baking tray, which I'm going to generously oil, this could be tricky. I'm going to arrange these in a couple of rows. And yes, it's not a perfect grid. And no, it doesn't matter. Okay, and just now get a chance to actually space them out a little bit because as they rise they will fill in all those gaps. Right that's a mess but that now needs to go in a warm place to prove for probably another 20 to 30 minutes. About 20 minutes or so in a warm place covered with cling film and these have definitely doubled again so they now occupy the entire tray. So those now need to go into the oven at gas mark 5 which I'll put a conversion for on the screen for 35 to 40 minutes. All right, a little bit sooner than I thought. They are definitely done, perhaps just a tad over. So that's 30 minutes, and yeah, they've got a really brown crust. Just save that, maybe. Right, that needs to cool for a bit before I can try and glaze them. To make the glaze, icing sugar. Now, I've got a feeling this is gonna be a bit clumpy because this is not the driest kitchen. Good grief, it's rock hard. Let's see if we can get that back into a fine powder. I think that worked. Normally we'd hydrate this sugar with water, but I've got this orange juice that's been sitting here, steeping with the orange zest. I'm gonna strain out the zest. I suppose I could have left it in there. Hopefully the flavor has infused. You know, we could have little bits of zest in this icing, but I don't think we really need it. And then, yeah, I've got way too much juice in there. So I'm gonna add some more sugar. I'm just gonna keep on going until we get to the point where it's a kind of pourable consistency. Not quite there yet. My sugar could have done with being finer than this. The lumps are a problem but actually not a real big problem. It's lumpy, but it's lumps of sugar, so, you know, it's not that bad. Yeah, that's about the kind of consistency we're looking for. Over we go. So, just gonna tease them apart a little bit. They're lovely and tender. <laughs> the, um, the spiraling's a little bit of a disaster, but not excessively. Right, so, <laughs> okay. Right, well there's the buns. But I'm just gonna let that cool a little bit because you can see it's steaming. If I try and put the glaze on now, it will just dissolve. Right, in case you're wondering why this looks weird, we are under artificial lighting now. But anyway, these have cooled down sufficiently. 
because I feel it's safe to get the glaze on. And this is the reason I'm working on this silicone pastry surface because I'm expecting a little bit of kind of collateral damage here. The real question though is how do they taste? They smell super orangey. I might have gone overboard with the whole orange vibe here, but we can but try. The texture of the, the crumb in there is just amazingly light. I'm gonna eat one of these standing up here in the kitchen while they're still lovely and soft and warm. Here we go. That's really, really good. That is really, really tasty. Not everything's perfect here. So let's just have a look at what went well and what went perhaps not so well. So not so well, my glaze is a bit lumpy because my sugar was clumpy. That's just unavoidable. I think I baked them just a little bit too long. I think I could have rolled them more carefully. There's not really very much trace of spiral bun here, but they're still nice and they've still all got a bit of filling in them. I was right, I think, to use the whole clementines in here. It has given them a really, really zesty, marmalade flavour, and I like that. So if you don't like that really slightly bitter, zesty, orange, clementine flavour, then maybe peel your clementines before you put them in. And maybe don't infuse the zest in the glaze. I was also right, I think, to dial back the sugar and the yeast. I think if we'd put 28 grams of yeast in there, they would have just blown up into a, a foam, and especially if they were fed with a full cup of sugar. There's room for improvement here, but what I've actually got is some really, really tasty sticky buns. Anyway, I hope that's been interesting, and I hope you'll check out Babatunde's video to make something like that bread. I think he's going to face a lot more challenges than I did because of the limitations of ingredients and equipment that are available to him. Please do check out his video. It's linked in this card and in the video description, and I hope you'll give him your encouraging support. I might revisit this recipe to try and correct some of those errors but I think the recipe itself is a winner. I hope it's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.